Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at what constitutes reasonable and unreasonable time when we're looking at algorithms. And we're going to do a walkthrough of code.org's 10.3 and have some practice questions as well. Alright, let's get going. If you're just looking for review questions, please skip ahead now. First, some review. Previously, we had looked at binary search and linear search. So I have this chart here. As I go to the right, that's more items. As I go up, that's more time. The red is linear search. The blue is binary search. And what we saw is if you're just searching through a few number of items, they perform kind of the same. But if you're searching through a lot of items, the binary performs better. So then we say the binary search has better scaling, means it works better when you get to large numbers. Scaling is an APCSP vocab word. We also say that binary search is a more efficient algorithm. It's doing the same thing as linear, but just doing it better. And again, efficient is an APCSB vocab word. So with this definition of scaling, we move on to two new vocab words, reasonable and unreasonable. And an algorithm is going to be unreasonable when the scaling is bad enough. So here I have the same graph that I posted before. The only difference is I've rescaled the y-axis. This blue one here, it's the binary algorithm. And if you do the math, it scales as log 2. AP board will consider this reasonable. Then you have the red one, which is a linear algorithm. This scales as n, meaning that if I have 10 times as many items, the algorithm will take around 10 times as long. And again, AP board is going to say that this is reasonable. So I know we've made a big fuss before about how much better binary was than linear. But in the end, AP board is saying, you know what? They're still both okay. So then I will post two other algorithms and post their speeds. So this yellow one here, this scales as n squared, meaning that if I have 10 times more items, it's going to take 100 times as long. And incredibly, AP board still says this is reasonable. More than that, they say that n cubed and fourth, that these are all reasonable. Now I'm going to say that real computer scientists do not think that this is reasonable, not in any way whatsoever, that the AP board has probably been engaging in some illicit activities, but for the purposes of the exam, just nod and go along. So what is unreasonable? Well, AP says exponentials are unreasonable. So this particular case where my algorithm scales is two to the N, if I have 10 times more items, it takes 10 to the 29 times more time. And in addition, AP board says things that scale as the factorial of N are unreasonable. So to summarize all this, these are things that are reasonable, things that are constant with n. So no matter how many items you have, that always takes the same amount of time. 300 seconds, 5 hours, whatever, those are reasonable. Things that scale is n, which means basically if you add 10 items, it takes 10 times as long. So n, 3n, n plus 3, and all of these, we only care about the biggest term. So in this case, it's the n, you can ignore the 5 in front of the 5n, and you can ignore the 3 in the n plus 3. And finally, polynomials, which even though no computer scientist thinks so, AP board says so, so I guess it must be true. So this means n squared, n to the 3, n to the 4. If I have something like n cubed plus 2n plus 5, you can ignore the 2n plus 5. You only care about the biggest component. And as far as what's unreasonable, exponents, so 2 to the n, 3 to the n, 3 to the n plus 5, and anything where the n is factorial. And if you can recognize when something is reasonable or unreasonable, you can answer any question on the exam that the AP board throws your way. Bravo! Oh, bravo! So now we're starting the code.org activity. In this activity, we have the code.org ticket generator. Give everybody a ticket and then pick one final ticket for the winning number. So here's the first question on the activity. We're looking to take two tickets and see if they add up to the winning number. So for example, if the winning ticket is 200, we're looking to see if ticket one plus ticket two is equal to 200. So if I check two people, you're gonna see it takes one check. If I need to check three people, it's gonna take three checks. If I check four people, six checks. Five people, 10 checks. You might recognize this series as the triangle numbers. And if I have to check eight tickets, that's the seventh triangle number or 28. As I check more and more tickets, AP board wants you to recognize that this scaling, maybe it's not so great, but it's not terrible, that it's reasonable. So for the second activity, we're still gonna have a winning number, but this time we're gonna see if any group of tickets add up to this winning number. So for instance, if the winning ticket is 200, We'll see if either ticket one or two is 200, but then we also need to see if ticket one plus ticket two is 200. And we'll also check if ticket one, two, and three all add up to 200. So right away, hopefully you can see that there's gonna be more combinations we need to try. So if I have two people in class, you'll see that there's three checks I need to do. With three people in the class, seven checks I need to do. Four people in the class, 15 checks I need to do. Five people in the class, 31 checks I need to do. You might notice that the difference between each of these as I go up is a power of two. So it's four, eight, 16. And if I keep on going all the way up to having to check eight people, I'll see that it takes 255 checks. This performance or the scaling as I get to high numbers is way worse than the other one. 
and the AP board wants me to recognize this as unreasonable. Code.org then has the teachers show you the mathematical relationships, the exact mathematical scaling, and that is this first one where we're looking for pairs, scales as n squared minus n over two. Again, we don't care about the n, we only care about the biggest one, which is n squared in this one. And because this is a polynomial, it is reasonable. And for the second one, where we're looking for any combination that adds up to our winning ticket, it scales as two to the n, this is exponential, and again, this is unreasonable. Finally, code.org has us look at their widget, where we look at n, which is say the number of items that we have, and then we see how many calculations our algorithm is going to take, if it scales as log, linear, polynomial, or exponential. And you'll see, for n equals 3, the polynomial is actually worse. But as I go to higher and higher numbers, you can see how poorly this exponential scales, and why we should never use an algorithm that scales exponentially. So hopefully you can see why code.org calls exponential algorithms unreasonable. Whoa! Now that's some you don't see every day. All right, practice questions. Question one. One of these is true about reasonable algorithms. A, a reasonable algorithm will always finish quickly. This is not true. Reasonable just has to do with how it scales when you add more items. That is, when you add more items, it doesn't get too much worse. But it might be really, really slow to begin with, in which case it would finish slowly. B, an unreasonable algorithm will not be able to give me an answer for all inputs. This is not true. This is something called not decidable, and you'll see this later on. C. An unreasonable algorithm may take too long to solve a problem for certain inputs. So this is what you just saw. This is true. This is the answer. Basically, as you get to bigger and bigger and bigger inputs, it doesn't respond well to this. It slows down a lot the more items I have to deal with. So this is basically the definition of a reasonable algorithm. D. An unreasonable algorithm will give incorrect results for certain inputs. This is not unreasonable. Again, reasonable has to do with scaling. This hypothetical algorithm might make some assumptions that are not true, or maybe it's just really, really bad but it doesn't have to do with scaling, and so it doesn't have to do with reasonable or unreasonable. Question two, here are some algorithm scalings, which is reasonable. So this is the kind of question the AP board is gonna give you, where they give you the scalings, but don't make you have to figure it out. So one, this has an n squared in it, so it's a polynomial, so it's reasonable. We only care about the highest power. If we have an n squared, we don't care about the three n anymore. Two, n plus 16, this is linear, so that's reasonable. Three, three to the n plus n squared plus two. So the worst term here is the exponential, 3 to the n, and AP has told us that that is not reasonable. So our answer here is C, 1 and 2. Question 3. Which one of these is considered by the AP board to be a reasonable algorithm? Bubble sort, which scales as n squared, shell sort, which scales as n to the 4 thirds, or bogo sort, which scales as n factorial? So this is a pretty similar problem to the last one. We know that polynomials, n squared, n cubed, n fourth, are okay. n to the four thirds, this is a little bit of a trick because the power is not an integer, but four thirds is still a polynomial, and so this is good. n factorial is not okay though. AP board has said factorials are not okay. So in this problem, we see the factorial. In the previous problem, we saw the exponent, and the answer here is B. Question four, given the graph below, one of the following is true. Now I'm gonna say right here, this is an example of the AP board doesn't actually tell you what the scaling is, and you have to figure it out from the data. So, A, this algorithm is unreasonable because there are some inputs that do not give a yes or no answer. No, this is related to decidability. Reasonableness has to do with scaling. B, this algorithm is reasonable because it scales as n squared. So here's why I have to figure it out myself. If x is 5 and y is 25, and x is 10, then y is 100, that does scale as n squared, which matches this answer. So B is true, and there's your answer. C, this algorithm is unreasonable because it scales poorly. Well, we already know it scales as n squared, and that's allowed under the reasonableness criteria, but this is not the answer. And C, this algorithm is reasonable because it has an answer for every input. No, that's decidable. So that's not what we're looking for here. The answer is B. Question five, which one of these is considered by the AP board to be a reasonable algorithm? This is another example where they're not telling me how it's scaling and I'll have to figure it out myself. So if I look at it and I do a little bit of math, I see that algorithm one scales as 100n, algorithm two scales as n to the cubed, and we know that both of these are allowed under the reasonable criteria by the AP board, even though it's not really true. Algorithm three though, scales as n factorial, which is considered by the AP board to be unreasonable. So our answer here is B, one and two only. I do wanna point out a trap here though for algorithm one. And that is all the times for algorithm one are really, really high. They are really, really high relative to the other algorithms at these low numbers. 
But what you would see is if you went to much higher numbers, so if the list were 10 or 20 or 50, algorithm one would stay relatively the same, whereas algorithm three would go crazy high. So here's an example where you have to be careful of looking at absolute values and instead be careful to look at how the algorithm scales when you go to more items. Question six, this is kind of more of the same. Which of these is considered to be by the AP board to be reasonable? Algorithm one, where I randomly poll 2000 students, no matter the number of students. This is a constant, so it's different from the questions you've seen before, but constant values are definitely reasonable algorithms. You could also think of this as something that scales as n to the zero, in which case it's a polynomial, but again, that is reasonable. Algorithm two, where I check in with every student three n times where n is the number of students. This scales linearly, roughly. We don't really care about that factor of three. And as we knew from before, linear algorithms are considered reasonable. Finally, algorithm three, which scales as two to the n. Hopefully by now you can recognize this right away. This is not reasonable according to the AP board. So your answer is one and two only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.